We've been looking at uh, some things about uh, Paul and the difficulties that he, uh, he went through. You know, you don't always think about other people's problems. We, we tend to focus on our own, but uh, you know, looking back in history at a great man of God like the Apostle Paul, you know, he accomplished so much for the Lord, and yet he, he did it in spite of the opposition and uh, through many, many difficulties. And he, one of the things he said, in, in actually in chapter 10 of, of 2 Corinthians, um, verse 14, says, For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure, as though we reach not unto you. For we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ. Uh, God took him to the, church, to the people of Corinth and, and reached people out of, out of great uh, misery, you know, just uh, idol worship and, and so on. And uh, he was encouraging them, verse 15, not boasting of things without our measure, that is, of other men's labors, but having hope when your faith is increased that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you. So he says, as you grow in faith, he said, I'm, I'm going to go on, and I need your help. You know, as we, we talk about missions this month, uh, you know, someone came here and, and started a church here. Someone took the gospel to you to me, to my family. And, uh, you know, we, we then are to, to grow in our faith and help the gospel to, to go on. It's a constant process, isn't it? Uh, you know, when, when somebody goes on, starts another church, uh, you know, missions work somewhere else, then they do the same thing, uh, to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you. And uh, verse 70, he says, He that glorieth, let him, let him glory in the Lord. People constantly criticized Paul. There were folks that followed him to... Uh, to give him a hard time, and so on. And he was just really concerned that the work of the Lord be pure and it be right. There in uh, chapter 11, verse 2, he said to them, I'm jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I've espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to, to Christ. And he wanted them to stay, stay true to the Lord. And uh, we looked at verse 3, I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. And as we, we looked last week, at, uh, so we began to look at some of the things that he went through. And, you know, you and I may not go through the same kind of persecution that he did. But I can guarantee you we'll have problems. And, and the tendency is to focus on those problems rather than what the Lord wants to do or could be even be doing through those problems. Uh, you, you know, when, uh, when, we, when we go through difficulties... Uh, we need to see that, that God can have a, a good purpose in all that we're, we're experiencing. Uh, tonight we're, we're looking at, at suffering, really. What, what he went through uh, to get the gospel to people. And really, as you look at his life, he was willing to do whatever it took. You know, he was willing to pay whatever, whatever price it, it took to get the gospel across uh, to different people. We, uh, we sometimes sing a song, I'll go where you want me to go, dear Lord or mountain, or plain, or sea, you know. Uh, there's a lot of songs we sing like that. Uh, but really, will we cross the street? You know, is the question for us. Will, will we just take the gospel to our friends and neighbors? We, we may not have to go through persecution. I don't know. Uh, Lord tarries, we might. But will we just take the gospel uh, in the situation that, that we face now? Read with me. Listen as I read uh, chapter 11. I'll start in verse 18. He says, seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. For you suffer fools gladly, seeing ye yourselves are wise. What he's talking about is uh, there's been lots of people who've been boasting about, you know, this and that. He says, well, let, let me tell you my situation. Verse 20, for you suffer if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. I speak as concerning reproach as though we'd been weak. Howbeit, where insoever any is bold, I speak fo foolishly, I am bold also. Now understand that word suffer there is, means you allow, you endure. Uh, English is a, is a funny language, and uh, suffer has another meaning, we know that. But uh, when, he, when he's using the word suffer here, he's talking about you, you allow all kinds of things. And isn't it amazing what people will allow in their life? You see some of these cults, you think, who would endure what they put them through. There's even ones where they tell you, you kill yourself, drink the poison, you know, kind of thing. Who would do that? People allow all these crazy things. You say, well, just let me just 
take a little bit of time here and, and show you a comparison uh, of my life. You know, you, you suffer, fool, you allow fools. He said, allow me to just say a few things here. He wants them to compare his testimony to those of, of false teachers. Uh, verse 22, are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. He said, I'm talking like them. I am more. In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in, in deaths oft. We'll read on it in just a minute. But you see, he wasn't in this for advantage or comfort. He, he wasn't uh, you know, driving a fancy chariot and living in a mansion, you know. Uh, he was just doing what had to be done. And what he's trying to get across here is um, his suffering is evidence of his commitment to the Lord and, and to them. He was willing to go through uh, whatever it took. And stop and think now, why was Paul suffering? There's a lot of reasons why people suffer. Uh, I just want to mention a couple here, and we're not going to take a lot of time on this, but you know, sometimes we suffer because of the sinfulness of others. You, know, you see situations where you know, people do wrong things and, and others suffer because of it. A bit like verse 20. Uh, if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. <laughs> uh, you know, there, there's things that people do. We suffer because of it. As well, sometimes we suffer because of our own stupidity. Now, you, you probably never had that happen, but, you know, you do something stupid. Uh, you know, you're 50 years old. You think, I'll just try this skateboard. And you break your arm. Well, it's your own stupid fault, isn't it? You know, it's not sin. It's not somebody else doing it to you. Uh, there's tragic things that happen because people are ignorant and, and so on. Sometimes we suffer because of our own sinfulness. Now, getting on a skateboard, that's not sinful. But, uh, you know, if you're taking drugs or getting into immorality, and uh, listen, you're going to suffer. Uh, the, the pleasures of sin only last for a season. And then comes the harvest. Uh, some people, you know, they sin by ignoring God's rules, financial rules, family rules, and they suffer because of it. Well, listen, Paul's suffering was none of those. Well, it was some of the sin of others, but Paul's suffering was sacrificial suffering. He was suffering because he was willing to serve the Lord. Uh, read, let me read, starting again in verse 24. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I've been in the deep. In journeyings often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. You know, there is there were just the physical outward things that he, he suffered as he just physically went from place to place sharing the gospel, the dangers that were there. Uh, like our brother was talking about, you know, going into an area and you think, oh, you know, this is dangerous. Uh, people, are, uh, people are out of control here and so on. But the cause behind it was serving the Lord. He, he wasn't going there for a holiday, you know, Apostle Paul. Our brother here, he's not going to South Africa for a holiday. If he was, it's not where he'd go. Uh, you know, going there to, to share the gospel. And, and there's the possibility of being hurt, of, 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 of suffering. But Paul would go anywhere for the Lord. And I'd, I'd ask the question, have you ever suffered because you love the Lord more than yourself and, and served Him? You know, as Christians, we need to, uh, to commit ourselves to the Lord. There, there's a very interesting little verse in 2 Timothy. It's chapter 3, verse 12. He says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Ooh. You know, maybe we're, we're just too easy on ourselves sometimes as to what uh, the Lord uh, would have us to do in, in taking the gospel uh, to people. You know, whatever we suffer in taking the gospel is nothing like those who die and go to hell. Uh, Paul suffered outwardly. He also suffered inwardly. Uh, verse 28 there, Besides those things that are without... That which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Who is weak and I'm not weak? Who is offended and I burn not? If I meet, must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. 
The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forever, knoweth that I lie not. Uh, inwardly, he suffered. You know, the care of the churches, the care of the ministry. You know, there's always a heartache in, in working with people because, I mean, let's face it, we fail. You know, you're trying to lead people to better things, and, and uh, some go along, some don't. Some, you know, get into the ministry and, and, and fail in morals or whatever. He cared about people. He cared about their souls. And uh, listen, the more you care, uh, the more you'll get hurt. Don't let that stop you. <laughs> you know, we commit ourselves to people, and the more you're committed to a person, the more it hurts when they fall away. Paul made an amazing statement in Romans chapter 9, verse 3. Just, just listen while I read it. I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Wow. Paul said, hey, what, what he's basically saying there is if my going to hell would cause the Jews to go to heaven, I'd do it. Now, he couldn't, and we can't. But he, just, he said that was his heart. He just, he just was willing to pay what it cost to take the gospel to people. As well, in, in chapter 10, verse 1 of Romans, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. He just had a heart for people. You know, we need to ask God to give us a heart for people. It may cause us to suffer, uh, but it's, it's worth it to reach people. He cared about Christians. Uh, in chapter 11, verse 2, I'm jealous over you with godly jealousy. Uh, he cared about them. And, and the main thing I wanted to get across to you tonight is this. How could Paul live that way? Uh, what can we learn from Paul's life uh, to, to be able to have that commitment uh, to serving the Lord? And I, I think the answer is that he completely identified with Christ. Paul was not into life for selfish reasons. If he had been, he'd have kept doing what he'd been doing. But he left what he was, he was a success as a Pharisee. But he left that he, as a Christian and he began to share the gospel. Look at um, verses 32 and 33. This is toward the beginning of his ministry. He says, in Damascus, the governor under Aretas, the king, kept the city of, of the Damascenes with a garrison, desirous to apprehend me. And through a window in a basket was I let down by the wall and escaped his hands. Man, there's a real proud situation. <laughs> you know, here's the Apostle Paul. They have to put him in a basket and let him down the wall. But, you know, when, when you identify with Christ, you don't care. You know, humility is a good thing. Uh, pride is, is not. And uh, here was a person who understood Christ suffered. Christ humbled himself. Christ was a servant. And uh, he was willing to be that kind of a person. Jesus said in John 13, I've given you an example that you should do as I have done. That's what uh, Paul had learned. You probably know Galatians 2.20. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That was the attitude that Paul had. Uh, that was Paul. He, he identified with Christ. And I want to give you two words, and I think these will help you if you'll apply them. His significance. That significance is the first word. His significance was in Christ. Now, the problem we have in life is a lot of times we're looking for significance in all the wrong things. You've probably seen it where one of our famous athletes, maybe an Olympic athlete or a great tennis player or basketball player or something, comes to the end of their career. And all of a sudden, their significance is gone. You know, they've been known as that great, here is John Joe Bloggs, you know. The great basketball player. Well, now he can't play basketball anymore. And there's nothing significant about him. You see, we look for significance in all the wrong things. Uh, if your significance is your youth, I can tell you, given long enough, it'll disappear. <laughs> uh, your beauty, that'll go too. Uh, you, you know, if your significance is your intelligence and all, all these other things, uh, don't live for self-image. His significance was in Christ. I believe the world's counterfeit for 
significance in Christ is called self-esteem. And you can disagree with me on that if, if you want to. But, uh, you know, the world looks for self-esteem. God says we're born with it. <laughs> uh, we're full of ourselves. And uh, God says we need to humble ourselves and find our significance in Christ. Uh, Romans chapter 14 and verse 8, he says, Whether we live, we live unto the Lord. Whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. As Christians... Our significance is in Christ. It's our union with Him. You know, think about Paul, the titles he used. Uh, many of the different uh, letters that he wrote would start with Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. That's who he was. Other times, the other most common uh, way he'd identify himself, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ. And it wasn't so much the apostle and the servant, it was his identity with Christ. And that's, that's where our significance comes from, folks. If you're having trouble with self-esteem, <laughs> uh, look to Christ. Listen, that, that's what gives you significance, is if you know the Lord, if you're a child of God. And we sing the song, I'm a child of the King. Well, that's, that makes us significant. Uh, they were, I don't know why I watched some things, but watching the news, they were talking about something they were doing in England there with the Queen and everybody. And, and these little kids were doing things. Well, what's significant about those kids? They're related to the queen. You know, I don't even know who they are. Well, what's significant about us? We're related to the king. You know, we're Christians. We know the Lord. Our significance is in Christ. And his attitude showed the same. In 1 Corinthians 10, he says, do all to the glory of God. That's why we live. Now, you can disagree with my interpretation of this, but look at 2 Corinthians 11, verse 30. We read it once. If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. I could be wrong in this interpretation, but I think what he's saying there, his only glory are all the mistakes he makes. <laughs> you know, he's saying real glory belongs to the Lord, but the glory that belongs to him is, uh, you know, it'd be like somebody saying, yeah, my family's a mess. I'm responsible for that. <laughs> you know, all the mess in his life was, was Paul's glory. In other words, there's no glory in ourselves. Now, Again, you can disagree with me on that. Don't live for, for self. Oftentimes you'll hear a preacher, before he starts to preach, pray, Lord, hide me behind the cross. That's what we're talking about. And not, not, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Stop and think about this, how you identify yourself. If someone were to ask, who are you? you know, what would you say? Would you say, I'm a child of the king? Or would it be some temporary thing that's going to pass away and and really will have no significance in eternity. Uh, Paul's significance was in Christ. Secondly, his security was in Christ. Uh, 2 Timothy 1.12 is a, a, a verse that we commonly know and, and, and sing a song to. Uh, he says, I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Our security is in Christ. These are two areas that everybody really wants but they look for them in the wrong places. Everybody wants significance. They want to feel like there's something good and unique about themselves. And everybody wants security. Nobody wants to feel unsafe and unhappy. And we want these things. They're found in Christ. We look for security in our jobs. Man, if you've ever lost a job, you know how little security there is in a job. We look for security in our country. Listen, there's countries that one day are there and the next day they're gone. Uh, in a house, in, in a culture, and so on. Paul wrote, for to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Our security is in Christ. A, a person can take our life, but they can't take our security. I, I've told this many times. I think it was Schofield. Uh, he was held up at gunpoint, and he said, do you think you can frighten me with heaven? <laughs> I mean, really, folks. We have security in Christ. Paul lived for Christ, not for what he could get, but for what he could give. And I mentioned this morning, you know, the riches we have in Christ, we can give it and give it and give it and we'll never have any less. It's a, it's a never-ending source, the riches we have in Christ. What you're looking to, what are you looking to to give you significance? What are you relying on to keep you safe? What do we mean by safe? You know, we need to be careful with our definitions, who knows what we might face in the years to come. 
Things are changing rapidly, uh, socially and morally. And it, I, I wouldn't be surprised if in my own lifetime, uh, if uh, people of our beliefs uh, were not only put in prison, but put to death and, and viewed as, as nothing. Uh, Proverbs 29, 25, he says, The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. There's eternal security in the Lord. But I have to say, it costs to serve the Lord. It does cost to serve the Lord. We need to appreciate that about those who've, who've taken the gospel. And Paul said to the church at Corinth, you know, the Lord's brought me this far, the Lord will take me on. And as you grow in faith, you'll, you'll be able to help me. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. I, I was thinking of a song that I, I, I remembered. I'll just read the words, I won't sing it. Uh, they say that heaven's pretty, and living here is too. But if they said that I'd have to choose between the two, I'd go home. When I'm feeling lonely and when I'm feeling blue, it's such a joy to know that I'm only passing through. I'm headed home. I'm going home where I belong. While I'm here, I'll serve him gladly and sing him all these songs. I'm here, but not for long. Isn't that the truth? We're here, but not for long. Listen, if heaven's your home, uh, it, there's a song in our, our hymnal. It's, it's, I can't remember the page now, but... Uh, it just says, I'm kind of homesick for a place I've never been before. <laughs> uh, that's the security we have in, in Christ. We can live for Him. Our significance is in Him. Our security is in Him. Uh, I believe Paul learned those lessons as he identified with Christ. And he was able to do what God called him to do. And, you know, the same applies to us. Uh, I, I don't know if there's anybody here tonight that's not, not saved, but it, at first we give our heart to the Lord. And when we're saved, our significance and our security are taken care of in Christ if we'll only live by faith and understand what, what God has, has done for us. Uh, so those are just some things I wanted to share with you tonight and thought maybe it'd be an encouragement to our brother as he goes to... I, kept, I was looking at your map. I thought that was South Australia, Elizabeth, you know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's, there's so many places in the world and the more you know about places and people... People are pretty much the same everywhere, and everybody needs the Lord. We're going to uh, close with a, a song. It's page 149. We'll just sing verse 1. It's the song, Because He Lives. Let's sing that, and then we'll, we'll have a word of prayer and, and have a, a time of fellowship. Ezra, why don't you come and, and lead us in that? <laughs> 